Alrighty, this particular uh, video is about Bernoulli's equation. Bernoulli's equation is a statement of conservation of energy. That if I take all the sources of energy in a fluid, pressure, kinetic, and gravitational potential, it is constant, does not change. Most often you're going to see this used to use one area of a piping system to find out information about another. So this is one area, this is another. All of the energy of this section must equal all of the energy of this section, regardless of how many forms it might come in. One area might not have gravitational potential or uh, kinetic. You have to read the problem and think very closely about what it's telling you physically as to scripting a proper expression for Bernoulli's equation, just as we did with regular conservation of mechanical energy. You didn't know if you had kinetic or gravitational potential or a combination of the two. Um, you had to read the problem, think about it, and set up your own expression for conservation of energy. It's exactly the same thing you have to do here. So if we take a look at an example, let's say I have a pipe down here, comes in, and then it, we're going to follow it up a tall building to where it comes out of a faucet. Well, certain things we can start to think about with our equation. P plus one-half rho V squared plus rho G H is constant. We said that one hint, any piping surface that's exposed to the environment, like a hole in a tank, the top of an unlidded tank, or faucet, the pressure was just atmospheric. So if this guy's a faucet, we know his pressure is atmospheric already without even giving any more information about the problem. Now let's say our piping system, which obviously here does change height, let's say it changes by 30 meters. So I'm going to measure that 30 meters from the bottom of my lower pipe to the top here, 30 meters. Well, we know with gravitational potential energy that height is relative. It has to be measured with respect to a zero level. Well, if my zero level is down here at that pipe, he gets a height of zero, and my faucet gets a height of 30. Which means the gravitational potential energy down here is zero joules. This part of the expression for the lower section of the pipe vanishes. But I would have an expression for gravitational potential energy at the top of the pipe, reflecting that 30 meters. Now, if the pipes are horizontal, if I had, let's say, a pipe like this connecting to a pipe like that, in other words, there's really not a height difference here. If height equals height, you can take gravitational potential energy out of both sides of the equation. It's not going to change, and therefore we can just pull it on out. So watching your problem for keywords like two horizontal sections of pipe are linked together. Well, that's this situation. This gets scratched out on both sides. If you measure the zero level for height as a lower section or an upper section, that's being used as your zero. One of those guys gets a potential energy of zero. Now, I could have made my zero level lower. I could have brought it down to here, in which case both would have height. Not a big deal. I would just have rho g h on both sides of my equation. Not a problem. Well, looking at my problem here, I say, hmm, I think I'm ready to get started. So let's put some information to my problem. Let's say our pressure down here is 4.5 times 10 to the fifth Pascal. And water's flowing in quite slowly, 0 0.71 meter per second. What I want to know ultimately is how fast is that water coming out of that faucet up there 30 meters above the inlet. So, write my equation. P plus one-half rho V squared plus rho G H is P plus one-half rho V squared plus rho G H. Now, if you want to do like one, one, and one, and two, two, and two, that's fine. If you want to call this bottom of the system and top of the system, that's fine. But oftentimes, you're dealing with a lot of information, so make sure you organize it very well. Pressure down there at the bottom, 
4.5 times 10 to the fifth Pascal plus, it was moving at a speed, so it has kinetic energy, density of fresh water, which of course is given to you on a test, so do not start panicking uh, that you don't get that, you know you do, times our velocity, 0.71 meter per second squared, plus nothing. I set my height at zero at the bottom there, so there's no statement of gravitational potential energy. Equals. It's a faucet open to the environment, so the pressure, 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth, plus. It's still water, and oops, one half. I'm solving for speed. It is moving, so it will have kinetic energy, and 1,000 gravity and height of 30 meters. Well, I have everything I need. There's only one thing that's not there, and that's that velocity. So this plus this, minus this, and minus that. Don't forget when I then try to isolate for velocity, the formula says v squared, so don't forget to take the square root of your answer, and you wind up getting 10.5 meter per second. So you have to read your problem and physically think about it. Look for clues. Look for things such as I'm measuring height from one point so I can set him as zero, or the pipes are horizontal. Is somebody open to the atmosphere so I know the pressure? Um, other little tip like you had on one of your problems. What happens if one area is extremely large compared to another, like a little hole in the side of a tank? We said here the velocity would be so high compared to the almost insignificant velocity there, that we can set him approximately equal to zero, which would also mean his kinetic energy would be approximately equal to zero. And I could factor that out of my equation. Uh, other things for these. Well, continuity equation oftentimes comes in to save your bacon. This is a statement of conservation of mass. And both conservation of mass and conservation of energy must be satisfied in any system. So a velocity you would solve for using the continuity equation, let's say at the top of my, uh, where my faucet was, you know, that velocity right there, that 10.5 meter per second, if I had worked this problem knowing the pipe diameters, I would have gotten the same V right here. I still would have gotten 10.5. You won't get a different answer with one formula than you will with the other because both are inviolate laws of physics. So sometimes you can find a velocity using the continuity equation fairly quickly and then bring that into Bernoulli's to solve for something else. Hence you might wind up having to do that. Do they give you the diameters or the radius or the area of your pipe sections, even if it's just one pipe section. If you're given some of this information, that's a good hint that you're going to be using this relationship to solve for a velocity. Do they give you a flow rate? And remember, flow rate is going to be a volume of fluid moving per unit time. Five cubic meters in 20 seconds. Eight cubic meters per second. If they've given you that information, along with one of these, use flow rate and area to solve for velocity. And if they give you flow rate and these guys, you might be really golden because A times V is flow rate, and it, of course, is constant in the system. So whether this is at the bottom inlet or the top faucet, doesn't matter. These two are identical. So if your problem gives you information on this, and it gives you information about sizes of your pipes, you got both velocities done. Very quick and very simple. So often this is used, and then we go into Bernoulli's equation to solve for something else, like a pressure somewhere in the system. Alrighty, Bernoulli's equation problems tend to look, 
They tend to, I think, upset people just because there's a lot of expressions there. And you really have to think. This is one of those times you can't just plug numbers directly in and get an answer. You have to stop and think about what's going on in the system. You have to look for those clues. You have to evaluate information. What does this information mean? What does it bring to the party that lets me uh, discern a variable or get rid of something if I need to? Alrighty, so do expect a Bernoulli's equation problem on tomorrow's test. There is one, I, I can assure you. It is nothing tricky. It is nothing strange or weird that you have never seen. Um, but definitely expect there to be one. Uh, whether or not he uses a continuity equation, I'm not going to say. But since there are continuity equations on the test, uh, equation problems on the test as well, make sure you're familiar with both of those conservation laws for fluids.